Okay, let's make an icosahedron or an isosahedron in on shape. So to do this, you need a magic number, which is 1618, and it's a ratio from that to 1, not to be confused with 161821, and I'll show you how we're going to use that. We're going to draw three different rectangles. You can choose any plane you like to start in, and you can draw this rectangle in any orientation you like. We'll do it this way. We're going to do the short end as one. You can do that whatever you want, as long as you keep this ratio clean. For the sake of this, we're just going to do it like this. So that's rectangle one. Let's rotate to a new plane. Actually, you're going to rotate to the short axis like this and draw a new sketch and make another center point rectangle. And you're going to draw this rectangle with the long axis oriented along the line. See what I mean? And so the short is one and the long is 1.618. Now we'll rotate to whichever one doesn't have a rectangle yet, which is this one. Um, new sketch. And we're going to draw this rectangle around the short end again. So like this. 1.618 and 1. Okay. So what we just created with this number, with this ratio, is a sort of a dot version of the polyhedron. So if we take three dots like this, that defines one of the triangles of our polyhedron. And if you don't like that one, you can go to the next one. See them? And there's another one after that. So um, what we're going to do is, the first thing we'll do is define, it doesn't matter really where we put the top of this, but we, we, it does make it easier if you put the top within a plane. And I'll show you why in a second. So since this dot is within a plane, let's make that at the top. So the first thing we're going to do is make a three-point plane uh, to describe one of the first triangle. So highlight three points, click plane, it'll automatically know that you're making a three-point plane. Within that plane, we'll make a new sketch. Within that sketch, we will take those three dots we just used to define it and highlight them and hit the letter U to use them in our sketch. Then hit the letter L and we will draw three lines. You can't make a chain of lines because each line is defined by the two points. Okay, so we're done with that for now. We have a nice triangle. Next thing we're going to do, actually the next thing we're going to do, well, the first thing I was going to show you from the shape to the origin, we're going to make a loft. Boom. We're going to take that loft and rotate it around this axis, but we'll lose this axis once we start building the part. So let's define the axis as a sketch here real quick. We're going to make a new sketch here. We're going to take the origin and the top of our polyhedron. We're going to hit the letter U uh, to use them the letter L, draw a line, and there you go. Let's just call it axis, A-X-I-S. Okay, so now let's take this part and do a circular pattern up here. It may be hiding for you, it's under linear pattern, circular pattern, and the axis will be this line. And But we would need four, uh, five of them. And boom, you got the top of your icosahedron. So now we need to do the next tier. So let's choose three dots which define a triangle from the next tier. Let's do a three-point plane. Let's do a sketch based on that plane. Let's take those three points again and use them with the letter U. Now, I could just use the edge of this. You can use that. We'll just cheat and do that. But you're basically, again, drawing three lines. And sometimes I don't like to use the edge of something because then it, it won't matter in this case, but it's kind of nicer to have three independent lines that you sketched so it's not, it doesn't try to make decisions for you based on that relationship. So, okay, so we're going to do another loft with this triangle and this origin. Make it new so we can rotate it around independently. And then let's take you to a circular pattern. For the axis, we're going to show this. Let's make it so we can see it and we can click it. We want five of them. Oop, you can roll your mouse wheel up, and it says five. Okay, we're doing. We're still doing new. Doesn't matter much at this point. So what we have now is the top half of our die. The problem is, we have two problems. One, we need to mirror it over a plane that we don't have, and two, when we do mirror it, we're gonna have to rotate it. So um, the trickier problem is finding that plane. Uh, so the way you do that is one, you can define the orientation of the plane, which is across these edges. So let's take three points from these triangle tips and make another three-point plane. Now we're going to use this plane, but we can take this plane and make not an offset plane, we're going to change it to a plane point. 
because we want it in this orientation, but at this point. And boom, now we have a plane that goes right across the middle of it. So um, at this point, you can select everything and Boolean it together just to make things easier. And now let's take this guy and mirror it across the plane we just made right here. Oh, uh, uh, this plane. There it is. OK, so we've mirrored it. Oh, hang on. We want you to be new. OK, we've mirrored it, but it's off axis. So now let's take it and do a transform, which is here. And we will change this to a rotate. And the axis is under our handy axis right there. Click that. And now um, we have a five-sided figure. We need to move it half of that, half of, or, uh, which is one. So uh, a tenth and a tenth of 360 is 36 degrees. So let's type that in here. And you're basically done. Let's Boolean these together. And you have one solid, beautiful polyhedron. If you want to check it, you can see that every side is the same perfect length. OK, so now if you want to take a die, if you have one, um, if you're making a die, or you can, uh, Shapeways has some 3D models of die that you can kind of roll around, because it's hard to figure out which number goes next to which. And so you can go, here, let's hide all the planes to make it pretty. Um, and so you can go through and create a sketch on each face. And, I rec and what I recommend is that you just name them, if this is the, the seven or whatever. Um, and then as you go through, you can figure out what's next to the seven. And then when you're all done, you can sort these one through 20 to keep it tidy. So there you go. Have fun.